to our Good News program. We're so thankful that you've tuned in. One of these things that you must understand is you've got to study the Word of God. There is no way to live this life in the last days with all the evil and the corruption that is in the world today apart from the study of the Word of God. And we are learning what the true two-fold headship of Christ is. And this is the head of creation and the head of the body of believers, the church. He is the bridegroom and we are the bride. And this is the body and the head has to be united. So you can never know the day that he is coming in the clouds to take us back to be with him in heaven during the seven year tribulation period. So the twofold reconciliation of Christ is the reconciliation of creation. Now we'll find this out in Romans that this earth has to be cleansed by fire and then the our reconciliation of the church. This means reconcile means restoration to unity. You cannot be divided as a body of believers and ever please God. You see, that's where this whole trinity comes in. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. All three of these are active in all the work of Christ and the Holy Spirit and our Heavenly Father. There is never any division with the Lord. The blood unites us into one body and there can be no division. So they are equally working together in everything that happens. So this is the twofold ministry then, is the gospel that we are to go into all the world and preach the gospel, the good news, to every creature. And this is something that you must understand because if you do not have faith, you cannot please God because if we receive him, we become children of God. After we receive him, we're going to learn more about that. And then you must know, faith is just believing what God says he will do. And then you must know this because you have to understand that if you appropriate his faith, his word by faith, he will never fail us. His promises are true. Now, this is something you must understand. You must always know that this faith is just believing that this wondrous thing is done. He's already fulfilled everything in this book. Christ has. And we must receive it by faith. And then we... This reconciling, restoration of unity, for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. We are a body and he's the head. He, he's the head of everything we do. And then having made peace through the blood of the cross. This is in Colossians 1.20. So this is what you see. Now, the next thing for believers, you must know this, we're in the last, last days, and it could be nobody knows. 
but all the things that are going to happen in the book of Revelation are beginning to come to pass. And he says, when you see these things beginning to come to pass, look up your redemption draweth nigh. Now he said, before he went back to heaven in John 14, verse one, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. So we are to be looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. And if you're looking for that blessed hope, you are to purify yourself even as he is pure. Every person that is a child of God, today we can't see people's lives being obedient to the Lord. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. You cannot live like the world and please God. You cannot hate another person because his word teaches us that our enemies, I am to love our enemies. Love your enemies, bless them that curse you, and do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. So in the book of John, we're learning today that in John chapter 15, verse 12, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. John 15, verse 17, these things I command that you love one another. Now, this is missing today more than anything in the world loving one another. Now he's going to come in a cloud to take us home. The Lord is going to descend in a cloud. He went up in a cloud. His disciples saw him and he said, those that have died are going to be raised first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together to meet the Lord in the clouds and so shall we ever be with the Lord. He is coming to take us out of this world up into heaven for the seven year tribulation period that is coming after we are raptured. And that is the Antichrist is going to be reigning. And you are going, it is completely different than what we are now. All the uprising of everything that's happening, only that is what God wants us to do, is to get this word out to all the people that are troubled, because they are troubled. He says, let not your heart be troubled. They are in fear. You cannot fear and obey God. Fear comes from Satan. He's not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and a sound mind. So this is why you need these messages to obey this book so you can show people the love of God and not hate one another. This is the greatest need today. Let's pray. Oh, our gracious and dear Heavenly Father, we truly thank Thee for this opportunity to get this message out to the ends of the world. We know this is the greatest need today, that God is love. He loves every person the same. And I thank Him for this divine love that He has given me for this whole world that we may go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. This should be the desire of every true believer today, 
to win those little children out here that are being abused, to give them the love of God, to pray for our nation, the rulers and the leaders, and to pray for Israel, the peace of Jerusalem, they shall prosper that love thee. Peace shall be within thy walls and prosperity in thy palaces. To pray for our armed forces, our policemen, divine protection, that all of the resources of heaven will be poured out upon every true believer, that we will have the love for those around us, that this Holy Spirit and His blood will be poured out upon every member of our family. This is a family unit, and we must pray for one another. Because it's not thy will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And we thank thee for this opportunity to get out this word. Save one hundredfold today. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. And as I tell you, these lessons are on my website, gloriousmessage.com. And we are seeing in this lesson what God has done for us. Every good and perfect gift comes from Him. Every good and perfect gift. So we're going to take a few minutes to go into John chapter 17, His high priestly prayer before He went to heaven, before He went to the cross. And this is in the book of John, as I said before. This is so amazing when we see what God has done for us. And I was reading John chapter 15 before, and I read to you verse 11. I did not read verse 11 because this is what he wants for you. These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. Do you know this joy? I know it. I live it. This is the abundant life, and this is what you need, because he says in his word, your, his cup runneth over, our cup runneth over. Hitherto have you asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you shall receive, that your joy may be full. That your joy. He wants us to have joy in all of these things that's happening and not be troubled and not have fear because those come from Satan. And then we see and also in these wonderful truths in chapter 17. The first thing we see is 17 verse 5. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was his eternity, his eternal, his deity. And then John 17, 3, every person should have this written in their home where everyone can see it. This is life eternal, that we may know thee, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. What glory this is. And then we see the gifts. Christ gifts to those whom the Father gave him. John 17, 2. And thou hast given him power over all flesh, the head of all creation, the head of the church, the body of believers, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast sent. Now, I want you to understand only those things that are eternal are important. And then we see that is one of the things. Now, listen at this, eternal life. And then he gives to us the Father's name. Listen at this, in Verse 20, verse 17. Verse, I'm sorry, verse 17, verse 6. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept 
thy word. Now this is his gifts that the Father gave him. This is us as believers. And then in chapter 17, verse 26, And I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. One with someone so great. You should memorize all of these verses because this is what he's given to us. And then I have to read verse 20, 17 with this one. This is amazing what he said to Mary Magdalene. She was the first person to see him after he arose from the dead. Remember, his crucifixion atones our sins with his divine blood. His resurrection eradicates our sins. He never remembers them no more. Now listen what he says. She was going to touch him. She called him master. And he said unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my father, but go to my brethren, now that's only the believers, and say unto them, I ascend unto my father, and your father, and to your God, and my God. What glory this is to have someone that loves us with an everlasting love. And there is not a person in the world that he doesn't love. And they are rejecting him today. When you're mean to a believer, you're not being mean to them. You're being mean to Christ. You're rejecting his divine love. And then verse 17, chapter 17, verse 8 and verse 14. I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me. Now this is Christ, Jesus Christ, talking to his heavenly Father. And they have received them and have known surely that I came out from thee and they have believed that thou did send me. He's given us all of these wonderful truths. And then verse 14, I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. We cannot love the world and love the Father. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And then the Father's words in verse, no, the Father's own joy in verse 13. And now come to thee, I come to thee, and these things speak I in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. He wants us to have the joy of the Lord in everything. I know that abundant life. My cup runneth over every day. I cannot thank him enough for all that he's done. Now, those of you that reject him, he doesn't send you to an eternal hell. You make that decision before you take your last breath. God made the place called hell, the blackness of darkness forever. You'll never have any fresh water to drink. You will be in darkness, and you will be with the people that helped you to go there because they were your, not your friends, but you let them friends lead you astray. No one loves you that wants you to do wrong. Only those that love you will give you out this truth. Only those that love you will give you this truth. This is the most important thing. And then 1722, listen at this. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them that they may be one, even as we are one. 
1. Now, can you remember all of these scriptures? I want you to write them down. Christ gifts to those whom the Father gave him. John 17, verse 2. John 17, 6 and 26. John 20, 17. John 17, 8 and verse 14. John 17, 13. And John 17, 22. You must know the Word of God. And then we see seven times Christ speaks of believers as given to him by the Father. In verse 2, we already saw that. And this is, he said, All thou hast given him power, as thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And then also again, in verse 6, twice he says this, I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou, gave, thou gavest me them, and they have kept thy word. You see, you can't give anyone anything in this world but the word of God. And thy divine love, his divine love, you can't give them anything. This is the only thing that you can give them that is eternal. And then, listen at this, Jesus is God's love gift to the world. John 3, 16. For God so loved you that he gave his only begotten son, that if you believe in him, you will never die. Your spirit and soul go to be with the Lord, and the angels carry you up into heaven, and your body goes back to dust from where it came. If you've never been born again, you don't have that spirit. And the gates of the spiritual faculties of the spirit are faith, hope, reverence, prayer, and worship. You cannot worship. You cannot pray. You have no faith and no hope apart from the Holy Spirit and he dwells in our bodies. Our body is a temple. And I have to read that to you so you can know where to turn to, because if you don't know where to turn to, then you can never ever give this to another person. Second Peter, he says in verse three, according as thy divine power hath given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Listen at this that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him that have called us to glory and virtue. Virtue is moral excellency. And then in verse four, whereby are given to us exceeding great and precious promises that by these we might be partaker of his divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. This is what we have in Christ. And then we see in verse 11 of chapter 17, we see these lessons and you must write them down and memorize them. Then he says, and now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy Father, you see, we don't call anybody Father Earthly except our physical Father, and He's our Earthly Father. God is our Heavenly Father. Holy Father, keep through Thine own name those whom Thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are one. And then, listen at this, verse 12. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in Thy name. And none of them is lost but the son of perdition. Of course, that the scripture might be fulfilled. That was Judas that deceived the world with 30 pieces of silver to deceive and to tell who Christ was. Then he went out and hanged himself. He was the son of perdition.
You see, that can happen to any of us. And then verse 12, while I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me, I have kept, and none of them is lost. And then verse 24, this is the best one. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. Do you love those around you enough to tell them the good news of the gospel? If you can't, you can use this video and take it to their home and say, I know that God loves you and I love you, and I want you to receive the gift of eternal life. And this life is in his Son. He hath washed us in his own, in his own blood. He has cleansed us by his own blood. We must see this Bible verse, and you should write it down. Revelation. Chapter 1, verse 5, and hath washed us from our sins in his own blood. His blood was divine. And this is a heavenly divine message today. And if you obey this book right here in verse chapter 1, verse 3, blessed is he that reads. If you are a child of God, he'll bless you if you read this book. And that they may hear the words, you have to hear them also, and keep the things that are written therein, for the time is at hand. Here are the words of this prophecy. Who is the spirit of prophecy? Jesus Christ. Listen at this. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Revelation 19, verse 10. I pray that you will get in the book of John, only 21 chapters. Read the book of John through in 21 days. More than one time, read it out loud, and you will know the true worship of deity. <laughs>